If any film in the 1990s or 2000s featured lesbians, the chances are they'd be villainesses, and this twisty thriller is no exception. TikTok has quite a unique storytelling mechanic where a plot twist occurs, then time rewinds to an earlier point in the story, and we then see events from another character's perspective. And this approach suits the clever evolving narrative set in Bakersfield, California. Rachel Avery is a trophy wife to the domineering Holden, and her best friend and lover Carla is a scheming photographer. Initially, the theme appears to be blackmail, with Carla setting up Rachel with a guy named Travis Brewer, who then attempts to blackmail her with Carla's photographs. What Travis doesn't realise is the two women are actually in cahoots to murder Holden and frame him for the crime. Extra players are revealed through additional time rewinds, including a private detective who Holden's hired to follow Rachel and identify someone she's having an affair with. But this is also a ploy by the two women, using the PI to create an alibi for Rachel while Carla goes and commits the murder. She does the deed naked except for surgical gloves, which is an inventive way of keeping blood off her clothes. And the murder weapon is an ivory tusk Travis was tricked into handling earlier. With the detective set for an appointment at Holden's place later that night, the plan is for him to discover the body. Did you really do it naked? <sighs> well, bloody clothes are hard to get rid of. It took me two minutes to hose off the evidence and get dressed. That's what Holden gets for not trusting me, huh? Yeah, he was even obliging enough to uh, leave a message on my machine. <laughs> you have the perfect alibi. We're really gonna get away with it, aren't we? It's too bad about Travis, though. He's a great lad, isn't he? <laughs> but like all brilliant plans, it starts to go wrong. Another surprise surprise psycho lesbian pairing, Dara and Camille are the highlight of this terrible thriller and it's about a fashion mogul targeted by a mysterious woman who murders everyone in his life. C. Thomas Howell is Michael Jardine and his character is unlikable as they come and that's not good when the viewer has to put up with his insane rants and crass attitude for pretty much the entire film. It borders on unwatchable with boring boardroom segments, difficult to follow dialogue and bizarre sequences such as a house party with people dancing around Jardine's father on a life support machine. Dara's a scheming murderess, skilled in martial arts with an extensive wig collection. The best moments before the climax are sparring with Jardine in a health centre, the opening strangulation murder of his wife during a sexual encounter on a beach, which unfortunately is nowhere near as good as it sounds, and a knife attack on Jardine's business associate. Jardine's brother is also on Dara's kill list, but that murder happens off screen and we only see the seduction and post-mortem corpse. Jardine's assistant Camille is also Dara's accomplice, and if he hasn't been busy scolding his associates, he might have spotted the obvious killer lesbian couple in his midst. Dara then proceeds to beat up Jardine while taunting him about all the people she's killed. The choreography is pretty amateurish here, but the scene is interesting enough for this film to be included as an honourable mention. Jardine eventually takes out Camille by throwing her off a balcony. Yeah! How do you like that? Dara survives in the end and Jardine winds up in prison plotting his own revenge. It's hard to feel any sympathy for this guy and anyone who does make it to the end will likely be rooting for the villainess. In this one there's just one lesbian psycho, though any 1990s movie buff will know to suspect Krista for that reason alone. She's the friend and on-off lover of the main character Sarah Ross, a woman who enjoys listening to phone sex conversations via cross telephone wires. That's until Sarah discovers a man she's been eavesdropping on, lives in her own apartment building, and the women he's been talking to are being murdered.
There's a serial killer collecting earrings and it might just be somebody in Sarah's life. A number of suspects are provided including a really sinister co-tenant named Randy Wilkes and a boyfriend Jake. Plenty of suspicion is thrown on these guys, we've got Wilkes threatening Sarah after she shares her suspicions with the police and Jake likes to watch violent videos in the CD screening room while waving his hands like an orchestra conductor. And yes, there's also a man who has photos of women plastered on his bedroom wall and that would be the apartment manager, but he's ruled out pretty quickly when he commits suicide after being falsely accused. The finale is a double dose of fake suspect reveals and fatal shootings. Wilkes attacks Sarah, attempting to strangle her. Then it's Jake's turn to act all threatening. Don't let him get near you, Sarah. <laughs> Sarah, don't let him near you! Don't you touch me! Sarah, please! Shut up, bitch! This is all your fault! And this was all part of the villainess's frame-up plot and she secretly plants evidence to incriminate the dead boyfriend. In TikTok, Carla is the woman planning things and drives the most important events. With Rachel shown to be more reluctant, even though it's she who will inherit her husband's money. When the detective fails to make his intended appointment and Travis discovers Holden's body first, he cleans up the murder scene and the women are then forced to make alternative plans. Carla's catchphrase in the film is this is even better than we planned and she says this every time something goes wrong and a lot of things do go wrong so get ready to hear those words a lot. The women have a narrow miss after they recover the corpse from where Travis dumped it and get pulled over by a deputy sheriff and they just about manage to get away and keep the faulty trunk of the car closed. The joy proves to be short lived though as they find the house occupied by Holden's daughter Anne who's introduced by, yes, another time rewind segment. And Rachel is getting increasingly stressed out and angry towards Carla as the plan falls apart. And this leads her to abandon the frame up plot entirely when she sees Carla seduce Travis at a remote cabin. Things keep on going downhill when it's discovered the dead body has fallen out of the trunk and while Rachel is able to retrieve the missing cadaver, she runs into the private detective who's now been hired by Anne to investigate Holden's disappearance and gets detained and Carla comes quite literally racing to the rescue. <laughs> Who'd you think it'd be, Rachel? The goddamn auto club? When the scheming women attempt to frame Travis again, is there waiting for them with a revolver, and Carla's able to feign an argument to gain the advantage, but Rachel's patience with Carla has run out. The frame up's even stronger. It's almost better than we planned. Yeah, it is. I know you're not going to believe this, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't do this, Carla. Please don't do this. <sighs> you never would have changed. Not even for me. <laughs> oh, over, over. The finale has Rachel escort Travis through the woods at gunpoint with him handcuffed but then she discovers the weapon she'd taken from the detective is faulty and so after a chase she has to resort to other means. However, before his demise, Travis had secured Rachel's ankle to his wrist. And we get an epilogue featuring a news report that shows Travis is a suspect in Rachel's kidnapping. And then months, or maybe even years later, it's revealed that the skeletal remains have never been found. <laughs> 